Thank you so much for creating with me today. Before we get started, let's go ahead and begin with our art class catchphrase. This will get us all in the mood. I'm going to say it twice like I usually do, and I'll be using American Sign Language. I'm saying it twice because the first time I want you to listen, the second time I want you to go ahead and follow along with me. All right, here we go. I make messes. I make messes. I make mistakes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, but deep inside, I got what it takes. I got what it takes. I am an artist. I am an artist. Awesome. Before we get started today, I wanted to give a big old shout out and a virtual hug to our sponsors, and that's Dixon Ticonderoga. They're the makers of construction paper and paint and, of course, pencils. Those beautiful yellow pencils with a green ferrule around the top and that bright orange eraser, that's who makes those. So thank you, Dixon Ticonderoga, for helping make these awesome, I hope they're awesome, art classes possible. That was a little presumptive, wasn't it? I know you don't know what that means, but your mom and dad, they do. So friends, let's also now talk about what supplies you're going to need. That way, while I'm still jibber jabbering, you can go and grab them. We're going to make something today called a coleograph. A coleograph is when you take a surface, and we're going to be using cardboard, that's a lot of times what it's made out of, and adding things to that surface to make the surface a little bit raised. It will also add a texture to the surface. Ultimately, that textured surface is what we will be using to create a print and a rubbing. Did I just blow your mind with all that information? Good, but here's the basics. Go and get yourself a cereal box, a snack box, something with a nice thin cardboard that you can easily cut with scissors. Scissors. You'll also need some glue, paper, crayons without the wrapper around them, and maybe even some markers and some water. I know that was a lot, but it's probably stuff you already have. And anything that I mentioned that you don't have, don't worry about it. We can always alter things a little bit. You can make a masterpiece out of anything. All right, let's quickly review the elements of art before we get started. <clears throat> that means you're going to repeat after me. Line, shape, color, baby, color, form, value. We'll be touching on that a little bit today. Texture is our big word for the day and space. And speaking of our word for the day, why don't we have our word for the day be coleograph? Whoop, whoop. Whenever I say coleograph, whoop, whoop, or you say coleograph, whoop, whoop, you already know what to do. And last but not least, let's go ahead and do our pinky promise. Get those pinkies ready, people. All right, <clears throat> you're about to repeat after me, remember? I pinky promise that no matter what, I will just keep trying. I might have never made a coleograph whoop, whoop, before, and that is okay. I will try my best. All right, guys, let's go ahead, grab those supplies, and get started. Okay guys, I've got my basics here. I've gotten an old cereal box and some snack boxes. And what I did was I pulled them apart. That way they could be nice and flat. If you haven't done that yet, you might wanna go ahead and just cut along one edge or just tear into it like I did to get your box nice and flat. What you'll end up with probably, like me, are two sides of your box. You've got two sides of your box. One side you can use for the surface of your coleograph. Whoop, whoop, where you're going to be building your textured surface for your robot. And then the other piece can be used for all the scraps you wanna make. Okay, so I wanna make mine just a little bit bigger so you can see. So I'm using a slightly bigger cereal box, but I've got all these other pieces of cardboard that I can use to build my robot. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut out a nice square 
That way I have a nice flat surface to work with. I'm using my scissors and you can see safety is very important when it comes to using your scissors. So I'm going to have slow, safe scissors. So my scissors, when I'm using them, they only ever point in one direction and that direction is outward. I never ever turn my scissors on my wrist this way because it hurts my wrist. Always have your scissors pointed outward. That way they're never angled towards you. I'm just gonna rotate my paper this way so I can keep my scissors pointed out. I can use these other pieces for my robot, but for now I'm just going to set them aside and focus on this. When I'm building my robot today, I'm going to be thinking a lot about those geometric shapes. And before I start putting my robot together, I think I'm just going to cut out some rectangles and some squares. So for me, I'm going to do that by just starting here and going all the way to the top. Maybe I will rotate this paper and cut it in half. Notice how my extra hand, who's usually kind of lazy. I heard that, Miss Stevens. I'm sorry, it's true. But it's gonna do all the work today by rotating the paper. All right, I've got a couple of good geometric squares there. Maybe I'll turn this one and cut it in half make a long rectangle. This is giving me a nice good workout for my hand, for my cutting hand. I'm not even thinking about what shapes I'll use for my robot right now. I'm just giving my hand a little bit of a workout by cutting. So I'm just snipping away. Maybe on this one I'll cut some even smaller rectangles. Oh yeah, my hand is starting to feel it. It's sweating already. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one. Maybe a little bit of a rectangle there. Now I've got a lot of geometric shapes, but perhaps that are squares and rectangles. Perhaps I'll practice making a circle. Oh, it's a little tougher because the cardboard is thick. Notice that when I cut out a circle, I rotate the cardboard the whole time with my extra hand. That's right, I'm making sure not to turn my wrist as I cut a circle. Watch, I'll go in slow. Is that annoying enough for you? Because it's really annoying to me, and I'm the one who's actually saying it. All right, I'm just rotating like that. All right, I could even maybe use some of these scrap pieces for something on my robot too. I'll set those aside. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus on practice cutting some more geometric shapes while you do that too. All right, let's think of all of the different geometric shapes that you can cut out. And as you cut them out, remember to keep in mind a variety of sizes, small, medium, large. It's actually a really good workout for your hands. Build up those art making muscles by cutting out a bunch of geometric shapes. So keep that in mind, but don't forget to kind of keep them organized. If you do, it'll make putting together your choreograph a lot easier. Okay, now that I have all of my papers organized, my bits and pieces cut out, organized into large, medium, and small, I think I'm ready to start putting together my robot. But something I wanna think about is composition or the placement of things. If I just start gluing things down, oh, what if I change my mind? So what I'm going to do is just lay things out a little bit so that I can start to think about what I want mine to look like, my robot collage to look like. All right, let's see, maybe he's gonna have a head here and a neck there. I need a nice big shape for the body. Ooh, I might need to make that neck a little bit smaller. And those pieces can go right into my small piece pile. There we go, okay. That's fitting a little bit better, I'm liking that. Let's see, now maybe he can have some legs that looks a little bit long. That's okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that. Okay, so maybe he could be standing like this. I think these medium-sized pieces might be good for feet. I don't wanna stack anything just yet. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it underneath, which it won't fit, so I'll just have to cut it and put that in my small piece pile. There we go. Perfect, okay, and I bet I'm gonna have to shorten this other leg. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start laying things out and then decide if I like it or not. All right, I think I like that, he's missing arms. That's a problem, let's see what we can do. Maybe he's gonna have a little arm here. The other one, he's waving. 
they can connect like that. And perhaps for the hands, I'll just use a couple of small pieces for his fingers. I can glue them like this. Yeah, there we go, okay. And maybe some more on the other side. Now, I've kind of got the basics and you know what? Now that I like the way that it looks, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing. Okay, now that I have all of my big pieces in place, I'm just going to flip them over one by one, draw a little line of glue around the edges. Did you know that if you put glue around the edges, you don't have to put any glue in the middle? Nope. I'm just gonna draw a couple of lines. Sometimes I even use a dot. You do not need a lot. All right, this piece is a little bigger, so I'm just gonna draw a little rectangle around the edges and put it back in place. Things will tend to move a little bit as the glue gets its grab time. Glue needs enough time to grab onto whatever it's trying to stick to. So if it doesn't stick right away, it usually doesn't mean it needs more glue. It means it needs more grab time. All right, I'm just doing the final touches on gluing everything in place. And then I can work on my favorite part, all of the details. So let me finish up my gluing and then we'll talk about how to add details to your choleograph. Okay, all my gluing is finished. My big pieces are kind of stuck in place. My glue is getting its grab time. Now what we can do is start to think about all of the fun details we can add. So for this, I really will start looking at my smaller pieces. Maybe this circle right here can become a dial. Perhaps this can become like a little keyboard. Again, I might change my mind, so I'm not gluing anything in place just yet. I'm thinking it through. I really need to think about, oh, I think I'll put some designs on his little robot legs. I need to think about what do I want his face to look like? What kind of expression will my robot, he or she have? Ooh, maybe this will become an eye. Yeah, I like that better. But I do, I think, want a dial there, so I think I'll take a moment to cut out another circle or an oval this time maybe. The more details you add, the more things that you add, this is going to make it look even more amazing. So think about how you can now use all of those small little bits and pieces to start to build up the face and the personality and the texture of your robot. Okay, I think all I'm going to do now is start to add more things and glue these pieces in place. I'm really liking where it's going. Maybe I'll add a couple of more details to the eyes. The more things I add, the better. That's why I cut out all these little pieces, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these guys down and I'll show you what we can do to this next. Time to glue all these teensy weensy itty bitty yellow polka dot bikini pieces in place. Whew, it might take a minute. And just so you keep track of all of the pieces that you need to glue, again, you might wanna start at the top and then work your way down. Or you can just kind of lean your choleograph over a little bit, tilt it, and if any pieces fall off, then you know those are the ones that need to get glued. Make sure everything gets at least a tiny little dot of glue. Remember, just a dot, not a lot. Okay, now that all the little small teeny tiny pieces and everything else has dried, they're not going anywhere. I'm now ready to do something called a rubbing. So when you're making a rubbing, you're going to need a piece of paper. It can be any kind of paper. I'm using a piece of paper for my sketchbook, but you could also use copy paper or loose leaf paper. You could even use newspaper, might look really cool. I'm gonna set it down over my choleograph. And now I'm going to find some crayons. When you're using these kind of crayons, you wanna make sure the crayons don't have any paper on them. I like to kill these naked crayons. So gonna need a couple of those, doesn't matter what color. I think I'm gonna go with um, purple. 
Once you've got your crayon picked out, to do a rubbing, you'll notice, in fact, you can kind of see, my crayon has a flat side, and that's because I've been doing something called a rubbing. After you're finished, you'll have a crayon that has a flat side too. The cool thing is it won't roll off the table. You're going to do a rubbing, which means you're rubbing your crayon on your paper. You will not be holding your crayon like you normally would. You'll be holding your crayon flat so that it's rubbing across the surface of your paper. This extra hand that doesn't do a whole lot, I heard that, it's going to hold your paper still because you wanna make sure your paper doesn't wiggle all around when you're doing your rubbing. So I'm gonna take my crayon, lay it on my paper, and now I'm doing a rubbing to reveal my robot that's been hiding under the paper. Oh my goodness, there it is. Now, if your paper wiggles a lot, your robot's gonna be a little bit wiggly and hard to see. So you wanna make sure you spread those fingers out nice and wide so that you hold your paper down nice and flat. It helps if you stand up and press down nice and hard so that you can really see your design a lot better. Put some muscle into it. Once you've got your muscle put into it, then you'll be able to do a darker rubbing. When your rubbing is darker, you'll be able to see it a lot better. Okay, there's the top of my robot. I'm gonna have my hand very carefully crawl to the top. I didn't wanna wiggle my paper because that would make my design get a little wiggly. Oh, there's one foot, but I need two feet, robot. So there we go. The cool thing about a rubbing with your choleograph is that you can do this over and over and over again. You could make as many of these as you like. And if you look at your robot and think, oh, it doesn't have as many details as I would have wanted. I forgot to put a nose. I forgot to give it eyelashes. I forgot to give it more details. Then you can just take your paper off, use your cardboard and add more. Don't get rid of this yet because we're gonna be using this for another art project in our next video. So don't lose track of this. But let's talk about some things you can do with your choleograph. You could use your crayons and you can add more color Maybe you wanna make certain parts a little bit more colorful. If you have silver or gold crayons, I'm just using two colors right now. But if you have a bunch of other colors that might be interesting to add on a robot, I'm just gonna color in a little bit because I actually really like the different value and the designs that the rubbing gave. So I think I'll actually stop right here. I do wanna show you another trick that you can use with your marker. The same trick we've been doing a lot, which is painting with your marker. I keep trying to use this marker and it is out of marker juice. I'm gonna try this one. I'm going to use the side of the marker to outline my robot. I could do this for just one or two of my prints, just for some variety. I'm just doing something a little different to see exactly what will happen. Art making is kind of like, or it really is, an experiment to see exactly what it is you can do. So I'm just gonna see what will happen if I outline my robot using that wide side of my marker and then add a little bit of water. If you remember from my other videos, when you add water to a water-based marker, that's a regular coloring marker, it will magically turn into paint. However, if you use a permanent marker, that trick won't work. Even if your marker is like mine, where you can tell my marker is starting to run out of marker juice, it's okay. This trick will still work great. Okay, now I'm just gonna add a little bit of water with my paintbrush. I'm then going to paint right on top of that marker. And would you look at that? Once again, it makes for a really great paint. And I'm going to try really hard to keep it in the background behind my robot. That way my robot itself stands out. I'm putting emphasis on my robot by not putting any paint on it, by allowing it to really stand out and shine, standing away from the background. You could say my robot is in the front in something called the foreground and that the paper is the background, the painted part. 
All right, guys, I hope you had a lot of fun creating your robot today. And remember, before you do a rubbing, let that glue have its minute of glue grab time. Otherwise, as you do your rubbing, your little pieces might move around and shift on you a little bit, which can be frustrating. So give it a moment to dry and just know that tomorrow you're going to need this cardboard again for our next robot project. All right, guys, I'll see you real soon.